today's uh, focus is to complete our discussion on Jake's method and also to introduce the notions of antenna diversity and the benefits of antenna diversity. We are going back and forth between simulation, theory, uh, concept, uh, intuition. So uh, antenna diversity is a concept which you will eventually implement using computer simulation for which you will use the Jake's method. So basically, Jake's method is our uh, tool that we will use for uh, any form of Rayleigh fading uh, simulation. So uh, before we get into that, let us just review the uh, concept of uh, Jake's method. Uh, Jake's method uses a uh, set of n n naught plus 1 oscillators. The relationship between the uh, between n naught and n is, uh, is given, n is a even number but not a multiple of 4. You've got a set of n naught plus 1 oscillators and the frequencies of the different oscillators are given. There's a very deterministic set. But when we go into the uh, implementation, uh, we find that we have some degrees of freedom which is uh, primarily in the form of these multiplication coefficients and also the phases that are to, uh, selected for the oscillators. So based on framework was what we had uh, developed in the last class. So let me uh, pick it up from here. So here are the oscillators. This represents the oscillators. Okay, this is also an oscillator. And then the scale factors. There is also a scale factor here, cosine alpha. And then we have uh, random phases. These are random phases. And you have them both in the real part and imaginary part. And uh, this is the uh, framework that uh, we have developed. Uh, what we had verified in the last class was that ZR of t, if I took the time average, is 0 mean and so is the imaginary part which is uh, obtained by these two. So these are the, and uh, we also had reached the point of, so uh, ZR of t, just it, it's helpful for you to write it one more time, ZR of t is 1 by scale 2. There are n naught oscillators, scale factor of 2, n is equal to 1 through n naught, the multiplication terms cosine beta n or the scale factors cosine 2 pi f n t plus phi n, those are the random phases plus the multiplicative factor for the last term root 2 cosine alpha cosine 2 pi f d. Okay, now uh, if you were to take this portion of this expression, actually it's not 1 by scale 2, it's actually we, we wrote it as scale 2, right? It's multiplication by scale 2, 1 by scale 2, 1 by scale 1, okay. So expected value of, so if, if I took this portion of it, let me call that as ZR prime of t, that's, that's minus the scale factor, the ZR prime of t whole squared time average, that, that was what we had uh, computed yesterday. I think that comes out to be 2 times n naught. And similarly, if we were to compute z i prime of t whole squared average, it comes out to be 2 times n naught plus 1. So uh, basically, uh, scale 2 has to be chosen such that scale 2 has to be equal to square root of 2 n naught, scale 1 has to be chosen to be square root of 2 n naught plus 1, so that you will get the variance is equal to 1 half. So this, this will ensure that the, the following conditions are satisfied, z r squared of t is equal to z i squared of t that is equal to one half. And I think that, that was, uh, uh, please make sure that there is no confusion, uh, that we have changed the figure as well as our expressions. I apologize, I should have uh, writ written it uh, up, uh, differently. Okay, the point at which we stopped in the last lecture was to ask the verification of the following expression. 
the autocorrelation of the uh, of the uh, complex channel uh, coefficient z, uh, z of t t plus delta t and you were asked to show a result i hope you had a chance th this would be expected value let me just write it in terms of the uh, time averages the time average would be the time average of z of t z star of t plus delta t you were asked to show that uh, this was equal to a quantity I, I i believe i have made a mistake in the scale factor it should have been two times summation n is equal to 1 through n naught cosine 2 pi f n delta t plus cosine 2 pi f d delta t. I think I had 4 and 2. I had an overall multiplication factor of 2 that, that, that was uh, not correct. Uh, this should be the correct value. Uh, can I assume that everybody is comfortable deriving this or will need to give at least a few hints to get to this point? Everyone's comfortable deriving this result? Okay. Yeah. A few hints. Okay. I, I, again, uh, if it's not needed, I don't want to take time. But if it is needed, I, I, I don't mind at all. So uh, basically, uh, what you would have to do is to do the time average of the following: z r of t plus j times z i of t this multiplied by z r of t plus delta t minus j of z i of t plus delta t. Okay, this is what you would uh, close bracket time average. Uh, again, like the previous uh, 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 derivations that we showed, any time you have a multiplication of two different uh, cosines of two different frequencies, the time averages will go to 0 because it will come out as sum of two cosines and therefore it will go to 0. Uh, what you will be left with is terms that are the belonging to the same frequency. So uh, if you were to, uh, of course, the this product is going to have a real part and imaginary part. Let me just write down a hint for the real part. The real part will contain terms of the following type, 4 times summation n equal to 1 through n naught, basically frequencies of the uh, cosines of the same frequency. So it is cosine squared beta n cosine 2 pi f n t plus phi n, cosine of the same frequency. So it will the second term will be cosine 2 pi f n t plus delta t plus phi n. Okay? And then there is the, the last term, the FD term, that will give you 2 times cosine squared alpha n cosine 2 pi FD times T times cosine times 2 pi FD T plus delta T. Okay, so you, you see uh, basically uh, cosines of the same frequencies, those are the only terms that uh, remain. Uh, you will also find that there are terms of the following from the, uh, uh, you will also find that there 4 times summation n equal to 1 through n naught. You will get sin squared beta n, basically this term plus 2 times sin squared alpha n this term. Okay? So uh, these cosine squared plus sin squared will, will add up. Uh, what you will be left with is terms of this form. Okay, I will just give you a hint for that. Cosine 2 pi f n t plus phi n times cosine 2 pi f n t plus delta t. This is only the real part by the way, plus phi n. So product of two cosines, you should get the uh, cosine of uh, the sum and difference frequencies. This can be written as half of cosine 2 pi f n delta t. That will be one term. That is a difference term. The, uh, the sum term will be cosine 2 pi f n 2 t plus delta t plus 2 phi n. Does not matter what the, the phase terms are, basically you will get a cosine of some frequency. If I take the time average, that will vanish to 0. So uh, this 
this has time average time average equal to 0 because it is a cosine function. Okay. So, uh, what you will be left with is basically the terms that are of the form cosine 2 pi f delta t. So, which if you go back and look at the final expression, uh, that is what is that is what that is what is present. So, this cosine 2 pi f n delta t and so, the real part has given you this. What happened to the imaginary part? Imaginary part actually uh, completely gets cancelled. Let me just write that write one step and then we will close that. The imaginary part uh, uh, again apply the same simplification. Uh, what you will find is that you, you will find terms that uh, of, of this form minus 4 times summation n is equal to 1 through n naught cosine beta n sine beta n cosine 2 pi f n delta t minus so that that will be part of the that's part of the summation I, think I need the brackets then uh, it is minus 2 times cosine alpha sin alpha basically the scale factors are now cosine and sine instead of uh, co cos squared and sin squared uh, this will be sin alpha cosine 2 pi f d delta t plus you will get exactly the same quantity. So, uh, plus the same quantity. So, therefore, the imaginary part completely cancels and, go and becomes equal and it becomes equal to 0. Okay. So, it is uh, uh, plus exactly the same quantity. Okay. So, uh, uh, you uh, please do verify. Again, it is not difficult, but uh, just need uh, you to be careful with the expressions. So, the, the, the final, uh, final result that, that we have is, is the following that uh, the autocorrelation function is of the form uh, that is given in this uh, by this expression. Okay, we are one step away from the answer. So, uh, let us let us uh, complete the discussion that, that we need for today. Okay. Now, we are trying to show that uh, the autocorrelation is a Bessel function, right? That is that is our goal. So, here is a result that is very useful for us j 0 of x is what is the what is the Bessel function uh, uh, expression for the Bessel function. If you look up uh, Haken or uh, Mollish any of those you will find the following 0 to pi e power j x cos beta d beta. Okay, that is uh, one of the expressions for the, uh, j, uh, the Bessel function j 0. Uh, we will simplify it for our purposes. Again, uh, th this is uh, for general, but we, we are interested in it. So, we, we would like to write it as 1 over pi integral 0 to pi cosine of x cos beta plus j times sine of x cos beta d beta. Okay, that is the rewriting the integrand and the variable of integration is beta going from 0 to pi and the only form of the, uh, the variable that occurs is cos beta. So, cos beta is of this type okay, from 0 to pi this is cos beta. Now, the actual integrand is sine of that argument. Okay. So, uh, since this is a symmetric uh, uh, integrand, the, the imaginary part contributed by the, the imaginary part will go to 0, because the sign of this portion will be, po uh, will be positive, sign of the other portion will be negative and when I do the integration that term goes to 0. So, what we are left with is 1 over pi integral 0 to pi cosine of x cos beta and I think some books already give you the di direct expression in this form and again applying the symmetries that are present you do not have to integrate from 0 to pi integral 0 to pi by 2 is sufficient and you can multiply by 2 because you are taking cosine of that uh, cosine of a negative uh, cosine of minus theta is cos theta. So, uh, this will be 2 by pi integral 0 to pi by 2 cosine of x cos beta d beta. So, uh, Bessel function approximated, uh, uh, not approximate, the, the expression rewritten uh, in this following fashion. Okay. 
So, uh, again, this you can more or less take it as a standard result. Some textbooks may actually uh, give it to you in this form, but uh, you know, uh, the more general uh, form is the one that is given in equation 1. A couple of steps of simplification brings it to uh, equation 2, and th this, is, this is the form that we are interested in. Now, uh, from your uh, uh, study of calculus, Integrals can be approximated by a rule called the trapezoidal rule. Okay, and let me uh, refresh your memory in case your uh, some some of you probably are very familiar with it. Integral a to b f of x dx. This is a very general uh, rule uh, of uh, real integrals. Uh, this can be approximated by b minus a by 2 n. Supposing I have n points in my uh, sample. So, basically if it is a function that I am trying to integrate between a and b, I am going to divide it into different values and I am going to have n plus 1 points total, okay, including a and b, the n points. So, n plus 1 total number of points. In that case, the, uh, the trapezoidal rule says that the integra integral can be approximated as b minus a divided by 2n. Think of that as a scale factor into f of f of uh, I will just explain in a minute x naught x 1 all the way to f of x n. There are a total of n n plus 1 points where x k is equal to a plus b minus a divided by n into k. So, it is a linear interpolation of the range between a and b and you are sampling your function at each of those values. The trapezoidal rule uh, often that will be that you would probably be familiar with is the first and last terms have got slightly different weighting than the middle terms. The middle terms all have a scale factor of 2. Uh, so, basically it will be all the way up to 2 times f of x n minus 1 and then f of x naught and f of x n have got a scale factor of 1. But basically it is a and uh, this 2 basically offsets the scale factor of 2 that is happening there. So, uh, the uh, uh, b minus a by n is the area of your uh, area of those uh, those trapezoids. Okay, so uh, basically uh, the trapezoidal rule says you have to add the areas of those trapezoids. You may give slightly different weightages for the first and last uh, trapezoids. Again, depends on how you interpret the trapezoidal rule and how many uh, sampling points that you get. Okay, so but basically this is a form of the trapezoidal rule. So the uh, observation is the following that uh, you have to evaluate the function, the function evaluated at n plus 1 points, evaluated at n plus 1 points and you get to decide. If you want to have a more, uh, a tighter approximation, you would uh, take a larger number of values, okay. n plus 1 points, they are denoted as x naught, x 1 and x n, x naught x naught is equal to a, the starting point of the integral, x n is the ending point of the integral and basically it is linearly interpolated in that range. Okay. And we also note that you have a 2 x weighting factor, weighting factor for the following points which is x 1 all the way to f of x n minus 1. So, uh, except the first and last, you get a slightly higher weightage for a factor of 2, but the, the important point is that you preserve the area of the, of the trapezoids and do the integration. Okay. So, now comes the important part and then you appreciate the, the insight and the, the practical engineering mind of uh, Jake's. Says, okay, I have to eventually approximate J0, which is 2 pi Fd times delta T. And this we have shown it to be equal to 2 by pi integral 0 to pi by 2 cosine 
x cos beta d beta. Okay? Now, uh, if I were to tell you, please apply the trapezoidal rule to this Bessel, this integral that approximates the Bessel function. Okay? So then uh, we will leave this 2 by pi alone, that is a scale factor, does not affect us. Upper limit is pi by 2, lower limit is 0. Uh, I am going to divide into n naught plus 1 points. I think you will start to see where the similarities are coming. n naught plus 1 points is what I am going to do in my approximation. So then it becomes pi by 2 minus 0 divided by 2 n naught. This is the same as pi by 4 n naught. Okay, that is another scale factor. The first one that, uh, and if I call this as x, let me call this as x. So the first term in the trapezoidal rule will be cosine x because b, uh, beta will be 0, cos beta is 1, cosine x. The second term in the trapezoidal rule will be basically uh, beta uniformly separated between 0 to pi by 2 and you are going to uh, increment it. So the next term is going to be a scale factor of 2 cosine x times cosine pi by 2 n naught into 1. Am I right? That is your uh, pi by 2 n naught is your uh, uh, the, the spread and into 1 because this is the first uh, uh, component of that. Okay. Second one will be pi by 2 n naught into 2, pi by two, uh, two, uh, pi by 2 n naught into 3, so on and so forth. And the last one will be pi by 2 n naught into n naught. Okay. So uh, please fill in the, the terms. The last but one term will be 2 times cosine x times cosine pi by 2 n naught into n naught minus 1 plus the last term will be cosine pi by 2 n naught into n naught. Okay? That is trapezoidal rule applied to the integral that approximates the Bessel function. If you just take a minute to uh, you know, just make sure that you are comfortable with that because uh, what the trapezoidal rule says is the, uh, the, the variable of integration gets uh, uniformly divided in the range of the integral and then you apply it to the function. And that is exactly what we have done and uh, obtained this expression. Okay? Now, we are just one step uh, from the answer. Can you please uh, see what this expression is? Is 2 pi fd times delta t into cosine pi by 2 n naught. Is that correct? So, if you rewrite this as this is equal to 2 pi f d cosine pi by 2 n naught into delta t starts to look like the oscillator that, uh, that um, uh, Jakes was using. And if you go back and verify, it is very, very close. It is not exactly. So uh, what was the uh, expression that was used for f 1, uh, the first oscillator? Uh, uh, basically, in the expression, what you would have got in the Jake's model, this is what you would have obtained. Jake's model, uh, Jake's model, the first one would have been cosine 2 pi f 1 delta t. Let us say if you wanted to approximate that, this would have been equal to cosine 2 pi f d. If you go back and look at the uh, expression, it will be cosine 2 pi by n go back and look at the frequencies into uh, n is equal to 1 and then delta t. This can be uh, rewritten where uh, n is equal to uh, 4 n naught plus 2. We use that, uh, uh, that relationship and, uh, and rewrite this uh, in, in, the, in the following way. We write this as cosine 2 pi f d into pi divided by 2 n naught plus 1 times delta t. Okay? And basically, it, the oscillator frequency is slightly different. Basically, you will have to compare uh, this term 
and this term and uh, and of course cosine of that and you find that the terms are matching now uh, the term cos x is actually ma matches uh, precisely because that corresponds to cosine of uh, 2 pi f d times delta t so this is a this is a per, uh, this is this matches perfectly uh, all those uh, uh, oscillators are very very closely approximated it's in in the uh, uh, in the trapezoidal approximation you will get 2 times n not in the uh, what jakes has used you get 2 times n not plus 1 uh, again why did he choose that n not plus 1 uh, uh, probably some other uh, reasons we don't know this is what how he had chosen it and we find that it's it's a pretty good approximation anyway by the trapezoidal rule so we go back and uh, revisit the result that uh, that Jake's uh, expression gave us. Summation or a time average of z of t, z star of t plus delta t, which comes out to be 2 times, which we have verified to be equal to n naught e equal to n naught cosine 2 pi f d uh, f n times delta t plus cosine 2 pi f d delta t where f n is given by 2 pi divided by n into n okay so uh, basically uh, let me make sure that's the correct expression that we have is that correct are the expressions for the oscillators correct Yes, 2 pi by n into n, okay. Uh, 2 pi by n into n. So, uh, and this we can say is a approximation, a fairly good approximation, and the approximation gets better as the, uh, as n naught uh, or n becomes large, and this is approximately some constant into j naught times 2 pi f d times. Hey, this is. Wait, 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 I have written something wrong here. This is f d times cosine 2 pi by n into n, right? Yeah, please, please catch me if I am making such mistakes. Uh, 2 pi f d times delta t, okay? So, the Jake's model, Jake's model does the following for us, uh, establishes that you get z r of t z the time averages are a zero mean let me just write it like this z r of t z i of t are zero mean they also have uh, uh, the uh, variance is equal to one half so uh, z r squared of t time average is equal to the time average of z i squared of t equal to one half. So, if I write down expected value of mod z squared, this comes out to be equal to one, okay. And uh, so, it's, uh, it's got the correct variance uh, that we want. It also has the correct expected value of z of t z star of t plus delta t is a stationary process which gives out some constant times j naught 2 pi f d times delta t. So, it satisfies the important things of zero mean, the proper variance and the appropriate time uh, correlation that we need. So, how do we use the Jake's model? Jake's model asks for uh, three inputs. The first one it asks you is how many oscillators you have to specify, okay. And uh, the thumb rule is n not greater than or equal to 15. You can take 20, 25. The higher the number, the approximation becomes better. Now, what is the drawback of choosing a large number? Uh, remember, these oscillators have to keep running. So, in order to get the next sampling and the next uh, uh, value of z r of t or z i of t, you must get those uh, cosine um, uh, components. So, basically, you will have to keep incrementing those oscillators, but it is uh, 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 just a simple operation when you are doing it on a computer. Okay? You have to first specify n naught. Second, you will have to specify what is your maximum Doppler frequency and then you will have to specify the duration of the waveform. 
that you need duration of the waveform. Okay? And uh, basically, uh, this, is, this is what uh, uh, we need uh, to in the, so you specify inputs to Jake's model, inputs would be the maximum Doppler, the number of oscillators n naught and the length of the fading waveform. Let us call that as uh, n length, length of the fading waveform. Now, we also have to make another choice, the random phases of these oscillators phi 1 to phi n naught, these are chosen, chosen to be random uniformly distributed random variables chosen randomly in the range minus pi to pi. So, basically some random phases are sufficient. Then we start running the Jake's model and generating the samples. The samples are taken as z of n to be equal to z r of n plus j times z i of n. These are the samples at the specific values. Uh, what we have done, we have taken T and set it equal to n times T s, where T s is equal to the sampling period, sampling period that you are trying to simulate. And uh, as an example, in the uh, case that we have considered, if I had a 24.3 kilo symbols per second system and I was doing 8 x over sampling then my uh, sampling frequency, sampling frequency is 194400 hertz and T sampling will be equal to 1 over F s. Okay. That is the and that is what you would increment because ultimately these oscillators are going to ask you tell me what is the value of T. You are going to start at some point and keep incrementing each time you increment by the sampling period. Okay. and depends on what oversampling factor you want and uh, notice that everything else is in, the, in this uh, picture is frozen, alphas have been, alpha is fixed, all the betas are fixed, the phases you have chosen each time you just uh, supply the value of t, it will give you the, all the, the cosine values, you multiply and uh, add with the appropriate uh, scaling and then that becomes your fading coefficient. Okay. And it turns out that this is a very effective way of generating Rayleigh fading on a computer which satisfies the statistics almost exactly as you would see in the, in the, in the real world in terms of the uh, fading uh, uh, statistics that we would observe. Any questions? Definitely uh, please take the time to uh, work through the uh, numerical uh, parts so that you can feel comfortable with the results that are, that are presented. Okay. Now, uh, there is a paper by researchers Dent et al, which I would ask you to read. I will upload it onto the, uh, on, the, on the website. And uh, the, the gist of what they are proposing is the following. This is Jake's model the oscillators were chosen to be 1 at FD and then equal, equally spaced with the spacing of 2 pi by n, right? The spacing was 2 pi by n and you and the last one was, last one was uh, before pi by 2. So, this the last one was at pi by 2 minus pi over n. Now, uh, the, this is Jake's. Dent et al. did a slightly different uh, approximation, which they said, wa what they said was, uh, let's, so the frequencies that were chosen were starting from the FD itself. What they said was, uh, so anyway, you are trying to do an approximation to the, uh, to the uh, integral. So, uh, it, it does not make a difference if your, uh, the first oscillator is not at F d, but slightly offset, 
and the last one is also offset. So basically, it's a different sampling grid of the oscillators. But notice that uh, neither FD nor pi by 2 are present. Uh, you are basically in between. Same number of uh, oscillators. Same number of oscillators that are, uh, again, the spacing is the same. Slightly uh, different grid that is, that is used. Okay? Now, the difference is that uh, the approximation that they have proposed to the, uh, to the Bessel function is that you can now write z of t to be equal to n is equal to 1 through n naught cosine beta n plus j uh, sine beta n. into cosine 2 pi f n t plus phi n. Okay? So, uh, if you want to put a factor of 2, it does not matter. So, basically, all the oscillators have got same scale factor, scale weighting. There is no, uh, there is no, the one particular one does not get uh, any special treatment. And they have shown that this is also a good trapezoidal approximation uh, with the n naught being sufficiently large. Okay, so uh, the key point of the method is one is uh, the claim is that this is a uh, this works better than the original Jake's model. We are not as much uh, interested. Uh, maybe that's a useful uh, result for us. But a more important result uh, for those of you who are already have worked in in uh, in wireless communication, you will appreciate this. Uh, let me call this as a n of t, the, the, uh, the part with, with, which is in the green bracket. Okay, so, this is nothing but, I am going to, uh, uh, for the moment, I am just going to ignore the 2. Summation n equal to 1 through n naught a n of t. Okay, th this, is, this is how you would write uh, z of t. Now, why is this important and what are the uh, uh, benefits? Basically, this uh, paper by Dent et al., why do we even uh, want to read it? Uh, if it is just another approximation, uh, you know, why not just accept it? Okay, we will just take this. But there is a very important uh, offshoot of this, of this result. The, the result is as follows. This can be written as 1, 1, 1 in vector form times A naught. Uh, sorry, a1 of t, a1 of t all the way to a n of t. Now, you may still be wondering what there is nothing new that we have gained in this whole process. Just, just wait for a result that needs to be embedded here. Uh, there is a series of uh, matrices that we encounter in the context of CDMA, but it is uh, very useful in this context as well called the Walsh-Hadamard matrices, Walsh-Hadamard matrices. It is a family of ma matrices which is derived from a basic matrix. The at the lowest level, the matrix is just a 1 by 1. Then it becomes a 2 by 2. It becomes 1, 1, 1, minus 1. So, the matrix is repeated three times without a sign reversal. The, th the fourth time, it is repeated with the sign reversal. The next level of the family, it becomes 1, 1, 1, minus 1. That is the first repeat. 1, 1, 1, minus 1, 1, 1, 1, minus 1. Third repeat and the fourth one has to come with a sign reversal, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, plus 1. Okay? Now, you have seen the pattern. You can, uh, you, can increase, you, can, you can work on it. The general uh, formula is the next higher level in the walsh hadamard matrices is given by take the lower level matrix, repeat it three times and the fourth time you take it with a minus sign. Okay, it is very important that you do not miss this and that is the walsh hadamard matrices. The beauty of the walsh hadamard matrices is that H Hermitian H is equal to I. Any of, any of these walsh hadamard matrices, if you uh, take its transpose and multiply, the real matrices, Hermitian is the same as uh, uh, transpose conjugate is the same as transpose. So, H Hermitian H 
you will find that these, so basically these rows and columns are orthogonal to each other. It's a very, very useful property that is, that is present here. Okay. Now, if I now write the following result, z1 of t all the way to zn naught of t to be equal to a walsh hadamard matrix of the appropriate size times a naught of t all the way to a n naught of t. Okay? So, what I have done from the previous uh, line, uh, I took the same functions a naught to a 1 and rewrote it and wrote it in terms of the walsh hadamard matrices. So, this first element is the same as z of t that I was trying to generate, correct? That is uh, basically the first row is all ones. So, the first row is all ones, but the beauty of it is you now have and other functions which are basically derived from the original set A naught to A, sorry, it should start with A1, A1 to A n, A, A, A naught, but the beauty of it is expected value if I call this as some Z matrix, Z Hermitian Z will mean a Hermitian, let us call this as A matrix, this will be A Hermitian, A Hermitian H Hermitian H times A, H Hermitian A is a diagonal matrix. So then uh, what, what do you find? You find that all these Z z1 through zn0 are what type of variables? There is no correlation between them. They are all uncorrelated variables because the, the, uh, the, the correlation matrix is a diagonal matrix. That means they have only correlation with themselves. They are not correlated with anybody else, any of the other functions. So this z0 through z, uh, z1, so this basically means that z1 of t, zn0 of t are all uncorrelated with each other. Okay? Now, the beauty of it is this is exactly what we will want to assume when it comes to diversity. Okay? And that is why the, this modified uh, model is a useful model which is uh, proposed by Dent et al. Uh, and since you are all uh, PG students, I would like you to, to get the feel for, you know, this is how research progresses. Somebody pro proposes something, he has some uh, basic structure, somebody else springs up and you know what, I, I cannot extend it using walsh hadamard matrices because there is a, this, this one has got a different scale factor. Can I do a different approximation? Yes. Then I can represent it in terms of this form. Then link it to the, the uh, walsh hadamard uh, matrix and then get uncorrelated sequences. Now, did, didn't Jakes know that you had to get uncorrelated waveforms for uh, fading? Answer was he knew. Okay? And his uh, way was, how do I get uncorrelated fading out of this, this one? So he said, well, the only thing that I can ensure that is, see all the betas and alphas have been frozen, right? So what you really didn't fix was the theta, the phi's. So uh, what he said was, okay, you generate one set of random phases. Let's call them as phi 1, 1, all the way to phi n naught comma 1. And then he said, okay, generate another set of random phases. That will be phi 1 comma 2, phi n naught comma 2, and let us hope that the waveforms are uncorrelated. But he really had no way of telling you, okay, you know, I can guarantee you that things are uncorrelated because they actually tried this and found that in some cases it worked very well, uncorrelated waveform. In some cases it is not working very well, there, there is a, a residual correlation. Whereas the method proposed by Dent et al. says, very clean, there is no issue of uh, residual correlation, this, this will assure you that uh, the correlation is uh, exactly as you want it to be.
Okay. So, uh, again uh, part of the course is to expose you to some of the, uh, the milestones that happened in terms of research and uh, th this is a very useful uh, one that is, that is present. I'd like to just take a few minutes to add the introduce you to diversity before we end today's lecture. And uh, our starting point for uh, diversity will be an intuitive experiment and time permitting, I would like you to try it out on the computer as well. So this is the experiment that you have already done. AWGN, you have a nominal uh, SNR, uh, this is, uh, and you generate instantaneous SNR as alpha squared EB by N naught. So basically there will be some uh, perturbation of the SNR around the nominal value and you ca calculate the BERs, you took the average and then you uh, obtain the result that is. So the steps that you followed was you generated different alpha Ns, right, instantaneously you generated that. From that you will calculate gamma N which is alpha N squared EB by N naught. Then you calculated the BER of that particular uh, trial as Q of square root of 2 times gamma N and then you finally averaged the BER and said that this is the uh, uh, BER expression. Let me call uh, 1 over N, N is equal to 1 through N BER N, right? Am I right? This is what you have done in your uh, computer experiment and you were uh, able to show that the graph is something of this type. Now uh, I want you to try this following experiment. For each of those uh, trials, instead of generating one random variable, I want you to generate two random variables, alpha n comma 1, alpha n comma 2, independent. Uh, and the SNR is going to be the maximum of the following alpha n comma 1 squared E b by n naught comma alpha n comma 2 squared E b by n naught. Each of these random variables is going to give you an instantaneous SNR. I give you the benefit saying you get to pick the better of the two and B e r n is the same as before Q of square root of 2 gamma n and B e r average also that you have obtained, okay, like before. Will the graph be any different? Will the graph be different? So is the problem clear? Uh, I generate uh, instantaneous values of Rayleigh fading and then I square it to get the instantaneous SNR. It may turn out that my instantaneous SNR at this point was, uh, was here, okay. That was when I did only one, one trial. But when I, the second experiment that I want you to try, you are going to generate each time two Rayleigh random variables and I am going to pick the better of the two. Is this graph going to change, B R graph going to change? Yes, and it will change for the better. So, which what you would expect is that it's going to be somewhere lower, right? It can, it can at worst it can be the same as the red, but it can, it will hopefully be lower because because you get to choose the better of the two. It you may end up with a lower BER, and therefore your overall average is also going to go down. That's the starting point of our intuition regarding diversity. If you have a choice of more than one copy of the signal, and if they are uncorrelated, it is very likely that one of them has got a better SNR. You should be able to get a better BER than if you had only one copy of the signal. So that is, with that as the starting point, we are going to build our intuition on the whole, uh, diver diversity is a uh, very vast field. But what we would like to do is, what is, uh, what is the essence of the concept of diversity? How do we exploit diversity and how is it exploited or how is it used to our advantage in the fourth generation and going forward into the systems, okay? So those, that is our starting point. We will pick it up from here in tomorrow's class. Thank you. Mm -hmm.